Miss Bree always on point. We're even three minutes early and she's the first one in here. That's what we like to see. I'm gonna be there on Wednesday through Sunday. So I hope I get to see your face. I can't wait to see you either. Oh, did I add her? There she is. Man, period, Bree being the first one in here. Prom I know, that's what I was saying. We're three minutes early, and she's just like, boom, hello. Right. Well, since you're here, Bree, and we're talking about this right now anyway, um, so Max will be here Wednesday at one ish. Yep. And we're going to have to go pick up Little Man. And then um, Thursday morning, we're going to go to the Botanical Gardens and do, like, a coffee um, probably before or just get coffee and something and take it out there and just chill and then film. And then Friday, I think we're going to do, like, downtown exploration and then film. But I have that event Friday night. So Saturday which will probably be ideal for you, darling. Um, I'm going to need you to bring your ass so we can film. And we need a guest. So yes, that would be nice. It's, it's you. <laughs> it's you. I think we should do one with her and Curtis and get this Kevin Samuels nonsense done because I'm going to kill myself. And you guys, as my friends, need to take some of the buffer away from my dad, man. Because <laughs> I can't take yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm still, like, in shock. Oh, we got it. I'll be there in the comments. Oh, oh. I can see the comments this time, so we're good to go. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Um, but, yeah, I need somebody to reel him in for me, and I just need... I feel like maybe we should, like, do a live while we're filming, you know, with my... with Curtis. Oh, yeah. That'd That'd be be cool. That'd be fun because then we can get more people interaction and stuff and maybe people I just need I need it to be of it takes a village, you know? And right now I it need does, a village yeah. to help me get him under control because I can't take it. Hey girlfriend. I'm, st I'm still in shock really about him passing because I'm like he seems like a very healthy dude. But you know what? Was it a heart <laughs> attack? And cardiac arrest, I Sorry. think. That's, I think that's what that means. Jimmy I don't know. Smiling. I don't know what cardiac arrest means. So I think that's. A I believe attack. that's heart attack. <laughs> I'm not sure. But um, you know, I wonder if it had anything to do with like the stress of like constant hate towards like certain people. It's not you know to be that angry all the time, right. and I think he was just period. I know, Bree. I'm not shocked either. He was just spewing out negative information and opinions i saw one earlier. but either way you know rest in peace yeah no i'm not like i'm absolutely 1000 percent not celebrating the death of a human being at all yeah i know we got we just gotta cover our ground we are you know <laughs> we're just, on the internet now <laughs> i just need i just feel like like i told my dad because my dad was like fucking obsessed with him and i was like I don't have an issue with anybody having any opinion. Like, you don't like this, you don't like that. That's your prerogative. Like, that's totally fine. And if you, the problem becomes when you start, like, forcing that opinion on someone. And I use Lizzo as an example because my dad's always like, Lizzo's big ass, always got some shit on, she don't need that on. <laughs> and I was like, you don't have to fuck Lizzo if you don't want to, though. Like, if you don't want to have sex with a woman who looks like Lizzo, you don't want to be with a woman who's built like that, that's fine. But when you go under Lizzo's picture and you say, hey, you fat bitch, take that off, then it's a problem. It's like, nigga, right. for what? You know? So, like, <clears throat> it's so annoying. And I feel like there's this whole genre of niggas on the internet just, like, Women are fat and they just want money. And I'm like, so don't date those bitches and shut up. Like, what is your point? I don't understand this need to bash women 
or men honestly like you don't women talk a lot of shit about men too I get that like the only issue I have with that part of it is that the shit women talk about men is the narrative men provide us like they're like we're out of control we can't be faithful it's natural I want to fuck how can you be mad at me for that and then we're like men aren't faithful and all they want to do is fuck and they're like and that's not all men no that's just the ones that make their opinions known or their come on buddy i don't know you know there is something called sharing too much of your opinion yeah it's like just keep it but you know i guess like the people that called in on his show we're if for anybody that's joining and we're joined in we're talking about kevin samuels but like um, and he was like a YouTube, um, he had his own YouTube channel and he would like talk about, talk to women that would come on to his live and then like tell them what they're doing wrong, essentially what they're doing wrong. And for the most part, why they weren't good enough <laughs> for what they were expecting in a man and in a relationship and stuff like that. And it was like, it was just constantly him. Berating women on their physical appearance. Yeah. And it's insane. He told he told Nicki Minaj, he told her that um, all men just want their women to be like a pet and, you know, go do something in the other room until I call you into the room and then. Like, like seen and, and not heard. And then I'll entertain you. Shit. Yeah, seen and not heard. Yeah. I'm like, what? But, you know, that's something else. That's something else that's wrong with our society is that we all watch that stuff that's happening, like, like the negative stuff, and then people talk about the negative stuff, and then everybody goes and views the negative stuff to see and get their own opinion on it, and then it just is blowing that person up and creating their platform and right. to be stronger. Get your ass over here. Frank's her dog. <laughs> it's my son. <laughs> Get your, my neighbor's baby ass kids are outside and they're so loud. Oh, I miss Frank so much. So I'm going to visit him. Sydney this week. Yes, I'm going there on Wednesday and I'm so excited. We're going to do some filming. So then we'll be posting so we'll some new videos. Yeah. Pretty soon. We'll Starting have some Monday. guests. Yeah, we're going to have some guests. That'll be soups fine. Make sure to check out our Instagram at Max and Sid Show because we'll also have some, uh, you know, updates about what we do together behind camera. Like uh, we're gonna check out some uh, the botanical garden she keeps talking about. Yeah, we're gonna go do some botanical garden stuff. We're gonna go explore. I'm gonna show you my new fave record store. Shout out Culture Clash. Um, and we're gonna get yeah. a little dressed up because she's got an art show. As well. Kind of an art show. Not kind of. She's gonna be live painting in front of an audience. Yeah, but that's not an art show. That's just, you know. Hopefully, people buy. It. Hopefully, somebody buys it though. It's gonna be one of the biggest pieces I've ever done. So that'll it's be exciting. fun. Yeah, where's my dog? Very excited at? to be there. Witness it. Witness the greatness happening right before my eyes. I feel like you started Irish and got Scottish, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive that you can really I really like that can hear that me. I'm super into English um, when we shows. first started hanging out I had a solid British accent and yeah, then it's definitely gone God, down words. I know and I'm like what is that <laughs> and I think it's like I try too hard now because I I don't know for some reason I always drop the first letter of whatever I'm trying to say and it's like no <laughs> That's not actually how a British accent is. That's the offensive way to do it. And I'm like, Max, pull yourself together before it's too late. I think what it really is, is that yours just stayed the same and mine got pristine. Oh, oh, is that what that is? Because I watch a lot of British dating shows and I know they're slang and stuff. I'm just really good at it. I could go over there tomorrow and it'd be like... There's always been like dating shows and stuff clearly but i feel like through covid it was just like boom 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 all on Netflix. yeah like the circle oh i guess maybe that i don't know that, there was just I a lot of that, that reality i don't think that I actually was a dating show I didn't it was that show where them. they were all in like an apartment building together and then they had to 
uh, talk only via through social media and they could create whoever they wanted to be or be themselves. I remember you telling me about it when you were watching it, but I didn't watch it. And what's the one with the fat guy with the Asian lady? 90 Day Fiance? Maybe. He had no neck. He looked like the Mason X yeah. monster. Yeah, 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> Which, yeah, that's the one crazy. That's like everybody was losing their mind about. Uh, one of the um, really bright as fuck. One of the people on that show, I don't remember her name, but she was on Ninety Day Fiance, and uh, she actually had the same um, massage therapist as Morgan did, and so she like met. She came over to Morgan's house a couple times to um, like hang out with her because uh, she had known her story and just. I came over and brought over, uh, well, so that's how Morgan um, won that Chanel bag. Or not Chanel, Valentino. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that I remember that. Yeah. Like, that's so random. I know. I'm like in little old Lakeview. Would you I go mean, on a dating show? <laughs> Lakeview, South Carolina. Would you go on a dating show? Are you kidding me? I can't even date in real life. You want to put a camera in front of it? I'm going to be like... I think you should do it. I think we should do For the Love of Max, and we'll put it on our YouTube channel. Um, It was this girl that her friends did that for her. They set up, like, 13 blind dates for her and then made her, like, film her responses afterwards, and then people started, like, I hope 13 wins, and I hope 12 wins, and then she narrowed it down. Her own little game show. So I found I know Ashley and Bria are in here, so y'all heard that. So <laughs> let's come up with like thirteen to fifteen for that. We'll we'll fill it out. Zoom dates. No. Yeah, we'll 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 pick like the best five and send them to you. I'm ready. <laughs> no, I did have a I did have a moment like in this last week where I'm like, okay, I think I'm ready to start dating. <laughs> But you should be like, oh, fucking hottie. Take a nap and hang out with my cats instead. <laughs> it's a circle I'm trying to get through. Mary and CB, I'm not gonna suck your dick, okay? I'm just, my daughter's so Max crazy is... to talk about them like that. <laughs> I'm also about to out you for being asexual because I'm pretty sure that's what you are. Just uh, not a big fan of all human contact. What's the big deal with that? You know, <laughs> like there's oh, a couple. My brother's, you know. my brother's well, in here. Don't talk about penises anymore. Sorry, <laughs> Aristides. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. He's here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. I miss yeah, you. I love you so much. You can do a, a show. I'll be on a small YouTube series of I want you to give them dating. Nick, I want you to give them all nicknames like Flavor Flav did. Like you got a nickname in there and only refer to them as that forever. New York. Who's I my always, favorite? She was think, crazy. She was first she of all, had her own show too. Yeah, and she has her own stuff now. Tiffany Pollard is her actual name. Look her up. She's got she's got like a shit ton of followers. She's doing it. I'm not mad at New York at all. I she was in the best entertaining part. That was the most entertaining part of that whole show. Do you remember there was an episode where somebody told her to break a leg and she got hit? Yeah, she was like she, she, she told me to break my leg. Like upset, like threatened. She's so bad. No, no, the, even the producers were like, Yeah, that means a uh, good job. That's theater. right. <laughs> yeah. so, if you really think about it though there was like such a huge like rave like this whole genre of dating shows when we were young that was literally just like women pretending to like celebrities to get them it was like the the like early version of like instagram models because like we're just like 30 random bitches in this house and now we're all like no 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 you cannot tell me one of them women wanted to have sex with flavor flav like that i know i know right so it's like y'all got flavor flav no like nobody wants to have sex with that um except for that big ass blonde woman he was with for all them years yeah remember they had a show too they had a show and they had they had dogs they had chihuahuas or something I don't know if they did, but I believe you. 
because they look what like was her name Vicky. I just remember she was super tall and blonde so some weird noises out there my babies are outside when you live in the fucking sticks I love it I love, I love it. it but yeah um, <clears throat> other 90s shows next and stuff I miss all those shows. My favorite one was Room Raiders. Yeah, I know. And okay, so this is my thought. How are you going to apply for a show called Room Raiders knowing very well that someone is going to come into your house? But then you don't clean it at all. You don't, you don't get well, rid of the goods. Max, they. So, yeah, right. So, perfect. do you think that that was actually their like embarrassing stuff or they just like planted embarrassing stuff and like, we'll give you 50 bucks extra if you think everybody or let everybody think you, uh, do weird yeah. stuff with this They're like, we air balloon. They're like, on the bed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll pay you an extra 50. Oh, you know what? The other lingerie. one, I saw um, a friend tweeting about watching Next, like, pretty recently. And uh, where, can you, where can you stream these? Who has these? Because I've seen people talking about them. Uh, I think it's Paramount Plus. Okay, well, you have Paramount Plus, don't you? Yep. Yeah, I'm going to need you to run that. I don't think you have it. I'm not. I don't know. But, um, like, you lost me. Oh, next. Like, that should be so funny. And how pissed would you be if you were one of the people that, like, just stepped off the bus and they were like, next? Like, I'd be so I know. And you got to (laughs) turn right back around and get on that bus with everybody else. And it's like, yeah, but they'd always be like, her eyes must be whack. Hopefully, she gets back (laughs) to the eye doctor. And it was just like, (laughs) that isn't so stupid. Like, Everything was so scripted. But that's, like, so how weird. people got famous, you know? Like, mm-hmm. they didn't have Instagram. So it would be like, I was on Next that one time. And then they were like, now I have something on my resume. I'm going to go to Hollywood. Or, like, yeah. they would cast for those shows, right? Like, if, like you go oh, in LA, sure. they'd be like, we're doing a casting for Next. Like, these are already people who are, like, trying to, like, get out there anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I applied back in the day when I thought it was real to this thing that was like, come be on the real world. And I was like, yes, I've always wanted to be in the real world. I'm a small town gay guy. I've got great perspective. How old were you? uh, Probably (laughs) like 19 or 20. (laughs) Still in my dubious stages of the real world. Yeah. And, uh, I don't remember being into the real world past, like, like in high school. I didn't watch the real world. I watched it in, like, No, I wasn't school. even watching it at that point. But I'm like, okay, I'm in the age that I could do that. So I, like, went oh. through this MTV thing that I thought anyways. And then they called me. And they're like, yeah, we would love to have you. You just got to send us $500 right now. And I'm like, okay. This is a scam. You're trying to get my money, and I work all way. I might have been older because I worked at Boost, which would have been Sprint. Oh God, that's embarrassing. That would have been like twenty. Is this like two years ago? That would have been like twenty three. Which would have been four (laughs) years ago. I love it. I love that you had that. Like you were like, yeah, fuck yeah. Bree says she would go on a dating show. Bree, we should get you. Okay, so this is what we could be on a dating show. I can see her. First of all, I will. Bree, you can hop on here right now, and I will put you on a dating show because I promise you, I know some people that would be much more than happy <laughs> to take you out. To <laughs> True. Um, but yeah, Bree's dating show would be lit. You're, you're We'd have to be a guest stars on the show, otherwise. Well, of course, I would we have can't to support it. it. Didn't they always have, like, a person who helped them? What? Didn't they always have a person, like, New York? Like, didn't her... I have something about Iron. It's pissing me off. I didn't feel her like anybody... Mom... Once they get their spinoff show, yeah, they bring in, like, a couple of their own people. Yeah, it was, like, her mom, and then Flav had his big security guy, and he just, like, help me out, big folks. I forget his name, but... And then you'd be like, I don't know, Flav, it's a hard decision. <laughs> it's a hard decision. They all bad women. I'm like, no. Oh, my God. Flav there was Flav this... and those big-ass clocks. That was his thing, though. You don't I know. know about You don't know about You don't know about, you don't know about He about always Flav. knew what time it was. 
Yeah, you did. I, wow. I respect that. I've been sitting weird and now my arm is broken. I'm waiting for Nolan to get home so I can go outside and smoke more. Mm. 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 Something um, feels weird about leaving your child inside to go smoke. Yeah, Rock of weird. Love. Rock of Love. Do you remember that one? It was like the white people version with that super creepy old motorcycle looking dude. Yeah, something. Yeah. Brett Michaels. Yeah, yeah. Brett, Brett Michaels. Michaels. Yeah. Brett like Michaels. Blonde, long blonde hair. And, and <laughs> I think it was long. Way. He had a bandana on. Look at that. And it was like some poor teen. Thanks, babe. Um, yeah, I don't think he had hair under there under his bandana. I feel like there wasn't hair under the bandana. It was just like a like a mullet thing, but bald up here. Because he always had the bandana and a hat on. Yes, it was creepy. So, they I were never. Mean, they were never he, like super <laughs> hot back then. If they had like a reality dating show. And they were also super washed up. Like I don't even know who I. Don't, I still don't, right now don't know what band Brett Michaels is from. I, don't I guess either. that every rose has a thorn song. Who's that? Hulk Hogan. I just watched a documentary the other day about Hulk Hogan having a sex tape. Yes! He and had a... It was crazy. He had a sex tape, and then his lawyer... Oh, yeah, you were just talking about that. It was fucking crazy, but basically, it was like... Like, I saw the preview, or the little trailer on Netflix, and I was like, poison. Thank you, Daniel. Um, poison. 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 Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> um, fuck. What was I just talking about? Sorry. Okay. No, I was I was Hulk I Hogan his. and yeah. his. Yep. Okay, so Hulk Hogan had a sex tape and the website that leaked it, it they didn't even leak it. Like it was like out already, but it was just in clips, but they got like the biggest hunk of the video and published it. And he tried to sue them. And long story short, this billionaire from the Silicon Valley like 10 years ago, that specific publication, that Gawker Online, they had published something about him that he didn't like. So he was like secretly paying for Hulk Hogan's entire trial with these people just to try and bankrupt them. And they like sued them very specifically and like so that like insurance couldn't cover any of the money. Like they made it so Gawker would be 1000% responsible for any money that Hulk Hogan won. And he was suing them for a lot of money. So, like, if he wins, they're probably going to go bankrupt. And basically, the documentary ended up just being about billionaires, like, buying publications and taking over publications and how journalism is fucked because all these billionaires actually own them. And so now they, like, can't talk about what these people are actually doing or if they do something crazy, like, it can't get out or whatever. And I was just like, that sucks. <laughs> and also suck. it's messed up I, well I felt like I was clicking on a Hulk Hogan sex tape documentary which is weird enough but I was like yeah I'll watch that sure why not I'll but then it led obviously. into the, it led into all this crazy and I was like what a fucking bummer I thought this was going to be kind of funny maybe but then it ended up just being way too real and I was like alright who's even trying to watch Hulk Hogan's sex tape anyways apparently it was his best friend and his best friend's wife, and it was like a cuckold type thing. Like his best friend was like, "I want to film you fucking my wife," and he was like, oh, "Okay." Little cuckold. And then, thing. and then his friend is the person who ended up leaking it, and he dropped a couple n words and a couple homophobic slurs in the full video too. So that was like a whole thing. But I was like, okay, are, we yeah. shocked? "Are we shocked that Hulk Hogan is homophobic and possibly racist?" I'm not shocked at all. I fully expect that from uh, a very Terry. aggressive field. <laughs> Do you say it's Terry? That's his real name, Terry Belia, Terry Below, Below, Terry Hogan, shit, like Terry Hogan. You so you didn't watch Hulk Hogan's reality show? Are you gonna lie on national Instagram in front of three people right now? No, I did not watch it. You didn't watch it? I watched the fuck out of that show. Mm. No, his at son... that age, I was still very much glued into Disney Channel, and if I was watching MTV or VH1, it was like the top ten countdown, top twenty countdown. In the morning, <laughs> before in I go to school, well, I'm up way before my brothers because I'm excited for school. I used to cry on snow days. What the fuck was my problem? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, but today was supposed to be the jam a day, and now we're home instead. <laughs> I'm like, 
I wait. Yeah. Oh, I man. was sick every year for pajama day in middle school. Every you single year. One pajama day. Not a single one. And every time I'd make my mom take me go to the store to get a new pair of pajamas, and then I wake up sick. I think it was like my nerves thing that I just hadn't had figured out yet. I think so. You were so amped up about pajama day, you just couldn't <laughs> even handle it and just made yourself sick. That's hilarious. I'm sorry. Every time. When you turn 30, we'll have a pajama jam. No, pajamas don't even look good on me. <laughs> it's stupid. I don't know what you want from me. I'm sorry. And I've found I've never found a single pair of actual pajama bottoms that fit my legs right. It's like <laughs> you need grown man pajamas, like a like a like a shirt and a bottom, like old people pajamas. I'm gonna get. I'm just gonna get a nightgown, like a like a moomoo, shirt, like a like a man moomoo. Yeah, and like a nightcap. I'm into that. Yeah. I think I'm just going to rock that. that. Sure. So when I start wearing those at your, around your house before I go to bed, mind your business, really. No one will love it. He'll be like, what the fuck? Is White Max's people. dick out under there? What is happening right now? <laughs> no. I will buy, I'm, well, guess what you're getting for your birthday? Well, I'm 6'4", so please find one so it doesn't look like I'm wearing that many drugs to the club. <laughs> trying to go to bed, my ass is hanging out the bottom i'm definitely getting you one that's gonna be like it's can't gonna even like, bend over in my own house it's gonna be like school it'll be to your knees that's appropriate enough fingertip length okay you don't you don't want to show off that thigh tat a little bit i mean the thigh tat but i don't have a butt tat i know but you know just a little something a little fun. A little, give me a little i was thinking fun. more like down to my ankles that'd be hilarious but I think you're dreaming. You're too tall for that. I guess striped. Okay, so do NBA players only get, excuse me, their um, pants custom made, do you think? They're probably rich enough to do that. Everything's tailored for their length. I'm sure everything's tailored. I don't, I don't know. Or they can NBA just afford players, so I have big no and idea. tall. They <laughs> add like an extra $20 to a lot of big and tall items. Well, no, mm-hmm. no one told you to be a fucking monster. Well, the worst part is that like when people usually buy me clothes for like a gift or like presents or something like that, it's always tops. And then they'll buy big and tall tops because I'm big and tall. But it's just my legs that are big and tall. I have a normal sized torso. So then I'm wearing a, a nightgown on accident. And I'm like, I'm a bitch. What are you talking about? You have plenty of nightgowns already. Yeah. I do. I do. Oh my God. Oh, I do. Um, what? Speaking of nightwear. Got a beautiful robe yesterday for Mother's Day, and it felt so fucking good. I fell asleep in it last night, and it was amazing. My mom is the best to celebrate for Mother's Day because uh, she wants absolutely nothing to do with us on Mother's Day. You know what? <laughs> she's I, mourning her loss, and <laughs> she's like, "I'm not mad at her at all." We're honestly. like, "Hey, would you like to uh, go out to lunch for Mother's Day?" Spencer's home for the day. He's got a day off, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm just going to stay no. home, take a nap and garden in a little bit. And I'm like, all right. That's what I like that to hear. That sounds amazing. Honestly, right. I'm fully going to be like that as soon as my child's over the age of, he's six. So I feel like he's got another year or two where I'm going to be like, like he made me a little thing at school. And when he gave it to me, I was like, oh my fucking God, like Mother's Day cute shit. Like this is adorable and I love it. And I want to like hang out with him. As soon as he hits, like, eight or nine, I'm like, yeah, you and him, get the fuck out. Nobody talk to me. Nobody touch me for the entire day. You can come home at exactly 12 a.m. midnight. I don't care if he sleeps in the car for a little bit. Like, do not. I'm a mother. I'm a mother. Like, get out of the house and do not come back until 12 a.m. Find somewhere to sleep is actually ideal. Just plan that night out. Get a hotel. Yeah, and I think my mom's thought process was always like, I'm a mother every day. So you think I want to be a mother on Mother's Day? No. Preach. <laughs> I want to just be me on Mother's Day. Preach. For real. Another All that breakfast day. in bed and, you know. But I'm not going to lie. Like, I had a great day yesterday and loud, loud, loud. Oh, was that? Yeah. Probably just in your ears. Hopefully not anybody at home. Good mm. lord. Um, I didn't even think about it. 
again with your volume. <laughs> what are you doing right now? <laughs> Being a silly gooser. Stop it. Um, We're silly around here. I forget what I was talking about, but I had a good Mother's Day. And, you know, I'm going to enjoy these next two or three Mother's Days where I'm like, yay, he's little and this is so cute. But as soon as he's like, smells a little bit, I'm going to be like, get the fuck out. Danielle says you're loud. So turn it down a notch. Oh, sorry, girl. <laughs> so you can't help you know, it. On the podcast, you're fucking. I'm a savage beast. I don't know what to do. I just like yeah. literally put your hands in handcuffs next time. Shoot, so. My dad said that. He's like, I'm going to fucking duct tape Max's hands behind his back next time. I'm a fidgeter. A fidget. I just That's need you mom. to. Um, I'm going to get you one of those rings, those anxiety rings where they have the ball on it. You can just. All the time. Uh, Daniil has this really cool fidget ring that like pops and spins and stuff, but it, it doesn't spin this way. It's like it comes off and then you spin it this way. Oh my god, I need that. It's pretty cool. It's cute too. It's like gold. Oh, and I think when you spin it, it says something. Like if you spin it fast enough, it looks like it says a word. Daniel, um, answer bitch. that in the comments. That I need. That's fly. what I need mine to say. Girl, calm down. Relax. Calm down. <laughs> Relax. Chill out, man. Yeah. Tell me all. I have like moments of anxiety and I'm like, oh, what is this? I am on medicine now. This is not me having any. It's weird because the most annoying thing about having anxiety is we live in a day and age where everyone's discovering mental health right now. So everyone's like, I have anxiety. And it's like, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't have anxiety. A You're anxious people, about a situation. Right. Oh, did you see that? It says half full. Oh, that's right. I used to label myself as a pessimist, but I feel like I've gotten a lot better. I still feel like I, I, I fall on the side of pessimism, but I've gotten a lot better. Like I tr I'm actively trying to be more positive, optimistic about things. I call my dad and bitch about shit, and he's always like, God damn, you were so negative. You didn't even know how the situation's gonna go yet. I'm like, You're right, Dave. You're a warrior. That's your problem. I do. I worry about everything. Like, I mean, Daniil and you both can attest to this. Every time I have an exam during the semester or a presentation, I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna fail. They're gonna hate me. No one's gonna like my stuff. And I get an A every time. <coughs> also, can I officially. <laughs> I'm going to need you to take your AirPods out at this point, because... What's the point? I don't know. Uh, we should just get off, because I'm sick of it. Um, <laughs> God damn it. I can't remember anything. I don't even know why I smoke weed. I have the memory of nothing. Is this a Freaky Friday moment, and we switch spots? It's been happening a lot lately. I know. I've been reminding you about things. It was just my train of thought. Like, I can't, I don't know what I'm ever thinking. It's just, I, it's the ADD. It's bad. Yeah, it probably doesn't help when mine comes in to say random shit during your stories. <laughs> I just don't know what I'm ever thinking anymore. What were we talking about before this that we wanted to talk about? <laughs> my God, <laughs> when we talked earlier and we were talking about things to talk about, what was the thing you said? And I was like, yeah, I even have a story about that. Yeah, it was a good one. Oh, we were going to talk about um, generations. God. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I want, I want to go first. Okay, go ahead. I, I have been dealing in my own personal life with my parents. Um, not, not even, like, like, realizing that my parents like, when you become an adult, you see your parents totally differently. And when you become a parent, you see your parents in a totally different light, right? So, like, I have a child. I'm a grown-ass woman. So now I have, like, I see my parents with different eyeballs. And those eyeballs have allowed me to realize that everyone over the age of 45 is fucked up. And I feel like <laughs> they're fucked up because our parents, like, I would say, like, 45, most of our parents are, yeah, most of our parents are in their 50s, right? So, yeah, I'd yeah. say, like, that, like, 45 to, like, 60 range of 
you know, to so my peers' parents, like, y'all's parents, their parents were so, like, har- not harsh, but, like, this is the way shit goes. They lived in, like, the golden age of America. Like, you go to school, you get a job, you get married, you have kids, everything's handy-dandy for everybody, and it worked. And then our parents, it was, like, their pa- like, my dad and my mom – and that whole generation, they're always like, y'all are so soft, y'all are so sensitive, y'all are so da 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 And I'm like, I agree with you, but I think we're more in touch with our emotions because you guys were fucking bullied by your parents. So when you had kids, you were like, I'm going to be nicer to mine. And then we're more like, ex- we can express ourselves a lot better. I feel like both of my parents are like traumatized emotionally. Like, just in general, like, they're just like, that's not tough. Or like, I think my son made a comment about pink. I think he said pink is for girls or something like that. And I was like, pink's for everybody, dude. Boys can wear pink. And my dad was like, no, they can't. And I was like, what is that? Like, what is wrong I with know. you? I know. And, it, and it's like, y'all are all so like, I don't know, it's weird. And I'm just like, I don't think that our generation is soft. I think you guys are fucking emotionally damaged like i think men were supposed to be manly men and women were supposed to be um a certain type of way loving affectionate blah 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 blah. and it's like we see i i saw i saw this post that went with this and it was like people born from like 85 to 95 are like the best generation to be running our country right now because we were raised when there wasn't um extreme technology yet but we also lived through the advances so like we know how to communicate with the older generations but also with the new generations and stuff like that and um yeah i don't i don't think that it's that we're too soft but just that we're a lot more aware and a lot more brave and comfortable to express ourselves, express ourselves, um, and, and question like... traditions. <clears throat> question tradition. We're like, that doesn't make sense. Why the fuck are we gonna do that? And I also feel like if we all know Facebook belongs to the old folks, so like every time I get on Facebook, I see. Not to say that people our age aren't also on Facebook spewing their life stories, but like. I always see, okay, like, for example, I live in the Old West End out here, and there's an Old West End Facebook page. The entire Facebook page is people 35 to 60 being petty as fuck. Like, Mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. And I'm like, y'all scream at us that we're, you know, so emotional and whatever, but y'all are all on Facebook just swimming in tea, spilling tea, drinking tea, sharing tea. Y'all are commenting on shit that has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with you. Y'all are doing all the same things we're doing. You're just doing it at 50, and we got it out of our systems at right. 19, no, 20. So and I, I've I'm, never thought about it that way. Yeah, and I'm like, we're... All the things that y'all say we like, are, y'all are. Because when social media and stuff started, it was our generation that was on it in the beginning, and then they all started to join it because, oh, what a great way I can keep in touch with... Luann in Texas. So like yeah. they all started doing that and then yeah, they're now they're I'm not gonna stand for this and then they Messy start typing their that. shit. Yes. And you're like do you do you understand that everybody's reading? <laughs> Everybody like, can see you guys people, being whiny. I mean not that, that our generations I, aren't whiny, but you know what I mean. People that I never thought, like in real life, that I know in real life adults. I never were like, oh, this is not a messy person. I don't expect this from that person. Them on Facebook is like the messiest bitch alive. And I'm like, this is insane. What about being over 45 and getting on Facebook makes you want to like get riled up? It's I like know. they're all riled up. <laughs> like, I have so met people me. before that have said two or three words and I have met them multiple times and I never hear them talk. And then you see their Facebook accounts and it's like they are on everyone's ads or just putting their opinions everywhere. And Young people or old people? A little bit of both, to be honest. It's always the quiet think, ones that are like... I think for young people, like, I don't, is Aries still on here? I don't know how to check that. 
But like my brother is 16. So I feel like he's very much in that like, I I guess Gen Z, right? He'd be Gen Z. Um, nope, he's not on here. He's not on here anymore. So, we'll have a we'll have a stern talking to him later. Um, I feel like his generation, like those kids, can like get on their like get in front of the camera and do fifty thousand dances and be like, "Hey, everybody, it's me, Tanner. We're gonna fucking do this today." But like when you have to have an actual conversation with another human being, they don't know how to do it. Yeah. Like, no. Absolutely. Yep. They can their... do all kind of crazy shit in their phone. Oh my god, my arm is literally broken. Why did I even feel like that? I'm going outside. I think no one's home. Or uh, yeah, they just can handle conversations. With, yeah, over social media, but just not in person. And they have no, no, they have no social uh, skills. Yeah, it's kind of scary. But I'm kind of hoping that, like, our generations who live through the part technology, part Amish land, um, yeah. like, I'm hoping that we raise, or we all notice the problems, and we raise our kids to be more like us and not, to, like, I think it's huge that most of our lives, not most of our lives, uh, a good chunk of our childhood was not involved with technology. Like, we were playing outside. That was how you entertained yourself. Like, going outside and ma having that imagination and um, all of that kind of stuff. But then introducing technology as you get older. I think that that was key for our generations. But now we, everybody has an iPad right out the womb. And it's... It's um it's getting harder to monitor those kids. It's also getting harder to explain to them that too much technology can be harmful when we're also incorporating everything in school systems to be technology with like smart boards and every kid gets their own Chromebooks and you turn your assignments in online now and the more I'm talking it, the more I'm sounding like an old person that's not ready for technology to advance. <laughs> I think it's just crazy because how old were you when you got a computer with internet in your house? I would have been, I would have been 14 or 15. Same. I was like... And that wasn't even, that wasn't high speed Wi-Fi. That no. was like dial up. Yeah. And it's crazy it. to me that like my son knows how to do everything he's a genius and i may be biased but no he's pretty damn smart he came up to me i you see how i paused for confirmation right there <laughs> <laughs> well you know you're gonna get it from me <laughs> i um he was telling me something he learned on a youtube video earlier and i was just like is technology horrible or is it amazing because my son is constantly spewing things to me that he learned on youtube but also he, like, doesn't, like, when we go to the park, there's, like, three or four kids there. You know what I mean? Like, when I was little and I went to a park, there was a lot of fucking people there. Well, there's always those, like, pictures of um, how when you were looking for uh, your friends, you would just ride your bike around the neighborhood and see where all the bikes were laying down. And it's, exactly. like, that was so true, like... Our whole childhood was just running to our neighbors' houses and hanging out with them wherever, you know, like, <clears throat> so. Now it's all <coughs> social media, like. Now these kids are fucked. But then it's also, yeah, like you're saying, there's a lot of kids that are, like, getting set up financially through things they're just doing over social media. It's like, so you can't hate on that because they're, like, finding this whole new level of career opportunity. Yeah, but YouTube stars only going to last so long. True. You do hit an age. And people yeah, stop. then you have to... Then people stop looking at you. They stop thinking you're so shiny and cool. And you have to become the Paul Brothers and learn how to box, and that's hard. Everybody can't box. Yeah, you know? I couldn't. What are we going to do? <laughs> Gonna start MMA fighting? <laughs> you should start MMA. My gosh, that's a lot of pressure. I don't know. 
<laughs> if Might you started, stop. I would be your biggest fan ever. You should start UFC. Is that MMA? No, I think that's different. Is MMA different than UFC? I'll start UFC, when you start. UFC, I'm, first of all, have you seen those women? Have you seen the men? <laughs> yeah, at least. Um, Max, you watched fights with us before. UFC woman is not the exactly. most anybody's going for it. I'd have to get um, my hair braided. I'd have to wear straight back cornrows all the time. I'd have to get super wide shoulders. I'd have to have... I already have no boobs, but they'd become squares. They'd just become hard squares. I don't have time for that. Can't true. do that. Not with that attitude. <laughs> Oh my god, those bitches are crazy! You know, we were watching we were watching some of the UFC fights last Saturday with my dad, and the big fights are five five minute rounds. That's a twenty five minute fight. Are you shitting me? And they're like on the floor wrestling around and shit. I could not fight for twenty five seconds without probably throwing up afterwards. Like I am so out of shape. I can't even, I've never seen an actual fight go longer than like a minute or two, like in, in real life. A 25 yeah. minute fight and they get a one minute like sit down in between each round or like two minutes maybe. The Kentucky Derby is only one lap. You just told me this and I'm still mind blown by it. I'm, you told me this like a couple of days ago and I was going to investigate but then I forgot I was supposed to investigate it. But I don't I, know why it makes me so mad. I have to think that there are other rich ass white people events going on during the Kentucky Derby. Like people I don't always think say, so. like, I'm pretty sure it's Derby just party, Day. party, one lap, party, party. So there's not a polo match at the Kentucky Derby. There's not. What's that game that's like cricket? Is it cricket with the with the pedal with the things that you hit through the loops? Yeah, you hit them through the little hooks. That's like a very rich white people thing. I feel like there has to be some kind of other like, oh, there's a polo match in the morning and you. Bleh. Like, I'm sure there's other things happening. I'm pretty sure it's just one lap. That's the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. I know, and they're making millions. Are they? What do you do? You What is the ticket? A super expensive they're, or what? No, no, like the racers based off like people betting on them and stuff. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Like the guy that won's going to be a millionaire. That's insane. The man who owns the horse that ran or the jockey of the horse that ran is going to be a oh, millionaire. That's a good question. I bet it's the owner, not the jockey. Obviously, and I'm like, pretty yeah. sure to be a jockey, don't you got to be like super small? You have to be like basically a, a little person. Yeah, like light and aerodynamic. Aerodynamic is an excellent <laughs> way to describe <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that one more time for the people at home? Yeah. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah. Now the one. Oh, the one too. If it weren't for them damn kids. And their fucking dog. And their fucking dog. Can you imagine if they really said that on Scooby Doo? It wasn't for you fucking kids and your fucking <laughs> damn dog. Damn fucking stupid kids <laughs> and your stupid damn dog. What was your What was your favorite Scooby Doo movie? Go right now. And if you say the wrong one, we can't be friends. The the one where they go to the island, the theme park island. No, fuck you, Max. What was it's I supposed one, to say? It's the Voodoo New Orleans one when there's the cat lady and they have all the cats at the house, and they have no. to like, and it's in New Orleans, and there's like, it's is the it best live one. action? No. Oh well, I was the talking about the live ones. action movies. No, the cartoon one, and then the second best cartoon one was the alien one. We have to break up on national Instagram <laughs> right now. No, <laughs> this is crazy. I, this is crazy. I watched, uh, I watched like the Scooby Doo episodes, but girl, you know I can't even remember what I ate yesterday. How am I supposed to remember that movie? Was it meat Damn. soup? <laughs> you watch your soup? mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Meat soup is disgusting. Oh, yeah. Um, how do you, speaking of gambling, how do you feel about gambling? Are you trying to gamble? I don't have a problem with gambling. Like, Nolan gambles a little bit on sports and stuff, and that's fine. 
because I know he has sense. Like, if I sense the issue with the gambling, I'd be like, what the fuck? But, like, I know he's not, like, out of control. I gambled. I used to gamble, not, like, gamble, gamble, but, like, I used to, like, play, like, we, like, play cards and, like, put money in a pot and, like, whoever wins gets the money and shit like that. But, like, I gambled for real on sports one time and I lost $200 and I never, it was, like, so it was when I worked at that AT and T marketing company, Ugh. and it was with one of the dudes there. And I bet him two. I bet against LeBron, which was stupid, but I just hate him so much. And um, it was when they, I think they were playing the Warriors in the finals. It was like two thousand like fifteen, maybe. I don't know. Whatever. You don't know what I'm talking about, anyway. Nope. But um, yeah, lost two hundred dollars on the finals, and I have never made a bet since. But have you ever been to the casino? You know what's funny? I've only been to the casino. Okay, I'm not going to name her because she is from Lakeview, but I had a friend whose parents were, like, always at the fucking casino, like, all the time. So when I would go spend the night at her house, like, her parents would go to the casino and we'd go to the arcade. So I went to the uh casino all the time as a child. I have not once been to the casino as an adult. Like, as a 21 and over person, I've never been to the casino. I went, like, I've gone, like, three or four times, but the first time I went, I bet I only put, like, $20 in, because you know my budget. And I'm like, <laughs> I lost it. And I was like, that was enough <laughs> of a heartbreak to never go back. I'm like, you're just losing money. That's my whole thing. Like, I don't understand how losing money is a rush for someone. Like, I, I would be in shambles. Now, if somebody was, spend like... It somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Like, if somebody was like, here's $500, go gamble. I was like, I'm going to be at home goods. Bye. <laughs> like, I'm not, Bye. I don't want yeah, to exactly. I don't want to. Yeah, Checking no, gambling is not BRB. my thing. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, I'm not a gambler. I'm not a big risk taker in general. I like to play I'm not play. a winner. <laughs> I don't win things. So I'm like, now you want me to put money in there, yeah. too? Don't no. say that. First of all, Nolan, I don't know if you're on here, but inappropriate. Do not text me right now. He just sent me a meme and was like, look at this. Um, (laughs) What the fuck were we just talking about, Max? Money. Gambling. Gambling, money, losing it. Oh, if somebody gave me money. Oh, I said that already. I had another thing to say, and I can't remember what it was. <laughs> this is what happens when you want to go live after 8 p.m., dude. Everybody's brains start going a little crazy. We've got 10 minutes, and I'm high. I'm just high. That's it. I'm kind of hungry. Party. You know what food I rediscovered, like, three days ago, and I can't stop? What? Barbecue Pringles. Yeah, barbecue Pringles. They're really fucking good. And I like door I was super high the other night and just door dashed some munchies and I was like, barbecue Pringles. Why do I remember those being good? And I ordered some. I was right. They're really fucking good. I'm a cheddar anything chip guy. That's why your breath is hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you have hot breath. I've never smelled your breath and been like, wow, man. But you better mean that because that's one of my biggest fears is that I'm gonna be walking around with smelly breath talking to people. I also have that. Like I have that bad. I'm like, what about my breath? So I feel like I like we stay with like mints and gum and shit in the car. Cause I'm yeah. not about to walk into any situation and possibly have hot breath. I feel like I'm very conscious of it. I just bought um cheddar sun chips and wish I would have bought the salsa kind question the red bag I got you and I'm I know what bag you're talking about but I have a question do you have anyone that you know that has horrible breath or like a reputation of breath and nobody ever tells them about it not anyone close to me no because I can remember two very specific people that I'm thinking of right now that I went to high school with that everybody knew they had hot breath and it was like a thing like everybody was like that nigga breath stinks but I'm like how does nobody told this man that his breath stinks like how do we all know this and nobody's telling him like how do we all know how come you don't know like how you don't know your breath how you don't taste it someone said you fuck you Jake (laughs) 
<laughs> I was ignoring it, but I'll throw a fuck you in there. <laughs> but, like, I just feel like if you have bad breath, you know, like, you should know that about yourself. Like, you don't taste it. I taste when my I breath I know, I'm like, bad. how don't you, right, yeah, I like, can when you tell, get up in the morning, like... you'd be like, okay, it's time to brush my teeth, you know? <laughs> yeah, it tastes like, gross. What the fuck? How you don't know your breath out of hell? Mm-hmm. I just never understood that, you know? But the yeah. moral of the story is, brush your teeth, I guess. <laughs> Be aware. <laughs> you don't know anybody with high breath. You just don't want to say it. No, I don't think so. I'm really trying to think. I went on a date with this guy that had high breath, and I thought someone farted in the room. It was that bad. Oh, man. Did you tell him? No, I just never saw him again. That's fucked I up. Actually told told him that I, I actually told him that I was... <laughs> <laughs> I told him I was questioning my sexuality. I don't think I'm gay anymore. Yeah, Sorry. pretty much. Savage. But You're after that wild. breath, I was confused. You're a wild man. That's so bad. I can't blame you. I feel like that's something that you should be able to tell somebody. Your breath is rank. Like... What if they can't help it? What if they got like a rotten tooth in there or something? Then get it out. What do you mean? I don't know. I look, you have a co, you know, this person. I have an old co worker that was like, my breath smells really bad because I have like an old tooth. And I was like, get it the fuck out. Like, why would you not do that? Gross. Money, money, money. Yeah, they'll charge you like 800 bucks just to pull a tooth. Man, you better put that shit on some insurance and never answer the phone when they call you, like everybody else. <laughs> oh my god, dude! No. When I no seriously, when I first started paying off, like paying down my credit and stuff, all of it was medical debt. Like all of it was medical expenses. I was like, God damn, y'all be just wild, and I've never Tell done that insurance. Like, yeah, it's. It, it's insane. a terrible. The uh, oh, when I do that, it looks like I'm bald. I like it. You look like Eric. Let's go to Canada. <laughs> you look like Eric. Let's go to Canada. I just got invited to one of my friends' thirtieth birthday parties, and it's in Canada. I know you Wanna told go? me. I would love to go. What part of Canada? Uh, Toronto. Yeah, I'll go. I'm probably not going to come to your friends, whatever the fuck, but I'll go on the trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Spencer's friend, and they met through the truck shows. Oh, yeah. I don't want to go there. <laughs> no, thanks. Hard pass. They're so nice. Their mom smokes mad weed. Well, cool. Y'all go to the thing, and I'll hang out with the mom. Is she a racist? Because that seems like... No, she's a sweetheart, and we'll hang out with the mom, because I'm not trying to go to a truck show either. Oh, it's a truck show. Not the mom, their mom. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. I like the mom. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. In Canada? No, that's a birthday party for her daughter. Where did the truck show come from? Because that's how they met Spencer and this kid. Cool. Yeah, but. All right. I'm so fucking excited. Yeah, I'm so excited to see you on Wednesday. I can't wait. Yes, I'll see you on Wednesday. And to our one viewer right now, thanks for watching. And uh, B. tune in next Monday. Oh, yeah, B. B.